camp. And some of the athletes have come out of there a little bit worse for wear because when the great athletes get together, if they haven't got the confidence to reserve themselves in training, sometimes they can murder each other. And you can imagine the training sessions they were doing and their training camp in Addis Ababa. I mean, Hailey was in the training camp for 14 weeks and it was nearly driving him mad. Because Hailey's a full-time businessman. He likes to run in the morning, 6 o'clock. He likes to go to work all day. He employs about 400 people in his businesses in, in Addis Ababa. And then he likes to go and train in the evening. But they would put him in the camp and he didn't know what to do. He was training and he was just hanging around. He hasn't done that for years. And I'm sure they probably trained too hard. And consequently, Hailey's struggling a little bit with his Achilles tendon. But here they are now, the three Ethiopians in the first four then two Kenyans behind them and now the race is starting to develop a little bit of a pattern I think that lap was probably be a little bit faster 65 no nothing special yet 65 taking them through four kilometers in 11 minutes and 15 seconds and that was a much quicker last kilometer there certainly by far the quickest of the race and I think we have a race on now the Keeley is that taken up the gauntlet from the other two Ethiopians. First it was Kebri who put a bit of pace in. Sehine kept it going and now I think the race really very much on. This field stretched out. We haven't reached halfway yet and already Bekele decides this pace is not quick enough. I'm far too comfortable here and really we might as well get on with this race. A quick 200 he's put in there. They're just trying to settle down behind him now. You don't really want to keep chasing the little bursts at the front. You want to try and conserve as much energy, energy as you possibly can. It's difficult when they do this to you. This is clear team tactics. They've all done a little bit at the front. And an athlete of his ability, 61 seconds there. Now they're operating. Now the gaps are opening. Now the race is on. 14 laps to go. And this is going to be a savage race now. You can see by the injection of pace there, you can see the gaps just between each athlete. They're all struggling to hang on to 61 seconds. And now the three Ethiopians, Bakili, Sahin, and Gebri Selassie just beginning to edge ahead of the two Kenyans. And then the gaps beginning to stretch. John Yuda drops back very, very quickly. And this is another fast lap as the Ethiopian fans at the top of the bend there start cheering and shouting. Hailey's trying to dictate it to them. But there the Kenyans aren't shaken yet. Charles Kamathi hanging on there too. He was the world champion back in 2001 in Edmonton. That was the first time we saw Hailey defeated in a major championship for many, many years. But now Sahin takes over. Hailey goes past the Keeley and they're doing the job. 13 laps to go. They're approaching the halfway point in the men's 10,000 meters. And you can see the heat and the humidity affecting the European and the American athletes. They're really working hard. They're struggling. But 61 seconds in the middle of the 10,000 meters is going to hurt you, whatever you like. No matter where you come from, no matter how you train, you're not going to be able to do that comfortably. And they're just incessant with the application of pace here now. Three Ethiopians at the front through the first 5,000 meters in 13 minutes and 50 seconds. That's easy for them, it's comfortable. But it will get quicker and quicker and quicker, I can guarantee you that. But these middle laps are already starting to take their toll. They're quick middle laps. It's not as though we've been building up to this steadily. Early laps of 69s, then a few 68s, a few 64s, and then a couple of 61s. That's got to hurt. I think the job is now get the three Ethiopians clear of the field. I think the team tactics are let's run hard, let's share it between us, let's wear the others down, let's get ourselves clear. And once we're clear of the field, then we can determine who's going to win which medal in which order. We haven't seen a clean sweep in the 10,000 metres since the great Finnish athletes were 1-2-3 in 1932. And the Ethiopians have certainly got that target in mind. It's a long, long time since any nation produced 1-2-3 in the most difficult track event on the calendar, the 10,000 metres. There's the European champion from Spain, struggling you can see Martinez the Americans are going across to the side bench and taking on sponges and they need it for the Africans the first six seven eight nine runners in this race are Africans and the first three are the three athletes we half expected being here the three Ethiopians 
It's slowed again, though, and uh, perhaps it had to. This is real team running, though, 64.95. Bekele had moved out to let Sihain take it. He now moves out to let Gabriel Selassie take it. And they just want to maintain this pace, but they have come back to them. Boniface Kiprop and Moses Mossop had hung on to the group. Oh, hang on to these three. There's Mossop, there's Kiprop. And we're just watching now as John Cherry's career joins the group. Two Kenyans are in the group now. And oh, they know, or they must have known that this was going to happen. They were as prepared as they ever could be for this. For just a minute, looked as though the three of them were away, but for the time being, we've got a race on again. It's all right knowing about what's going to happen. It's what you can do about it. And when you're tired, all the will and all the tactics and all the arrangements that have been made beforehand go out of the window when these guys are putting under pressure in these conditions. But the three Ethiopians continue to lead. They've been joined by Boniface Kiprop of Uganda. He's a very good athlete, Kiprop, but I don't think he's in this calibre. His fastest time this year is 28 minutes and 3 seconds, compared with 26.20. Well, now they've decided they don't want company. Can they try and break away from Kiprop? And the gap between Kiprop and the, and the next group is widening, and highly struggling. He's hanging on there as the two young men, the two men who want the title desperately that Hailey's held for the last two Olympic Games. And I think he was struggling there, I think he was under pressure. I don't know whether it's his leg that's hurting him or whether he's just suffering from the incessant pace. But there's John Yuda, steps off the track. He fell earlier, he wasn't able to recover from that. Sadly, John Yuda from Tanzania, who was an athlete who was expected to feature in the first six or seven in this race, is now out of it. As we look at two, three, four, six, that's John Korea, one of the Kenyans, and he's way off the back. So the three Ethiopians and Boniface Kiprop from Uganda, and it's between those four now. The gap's open. Korea can't do anything about it. So the Kenyans are out of the mix. The Ethiopians are working together. Now the world record holder takes over. He's trying to do enough to open a gap. They'll settle if they get the gap, but Kiprop is running an excellent race. That last lap was the fastest of the race, 60.61. It made Gebri Selassie hurt, but he's still there. Bekele looks incredibly relaxed at the front. He's trying to maintain the pace, keep the pressure on. Sihine on his shoulder. It's just dropping again a little bit, meaning that Kiprop can hang on to them. He's a really talented youngster, Kiprop, just 18 years of age. And remember when we saw Gebri Selassie, oh, so many years ago, 12 years ago now, I think, when he first burst onto the scene, then winning his world title in 93. Bekele, as a youngster, winning the World Junior Cross Country Championship. Sihine, another huge talent. Kiprop, another one behind them. 63.63, another quick lap, but there are still four men in this race. Sihine's turn to take it out at the front, and they have Mick been running as a team here. They've been helping each other. And I guess the deal is, if you can keep up, great, then help out. If you don't keep up, then I'm, we're not going to wait for you, we'll be away. So Gebri knows that. Haven't seen him at the front for a couple of laps, at least. And they're very anxious about the young Ugandan. As one of the, the New Zealand athletes, he can't take any more. It's too hot, it's too fast. He obviously wasn't making any progress as we watched. The world record holder taking over again from Sahin. Haile hasn't done much recently. I'm sure he's struggling there. This one now, is it too much for Haile Gabri Selassie? Boniface Kiprop, the world junior champion over 10,000 meters, goes past Gabri Selassie. And Gabri Selassie, for the first time in a major championship, is really under pressure. He's struggling. His legs giving him trouble. And is he going to be able to complete the race? Now, a very sad sight here. The reigning champion, the two times champion, one of the all-time greats of distance running is finding his attempt to win a third track medal at the same event which nobody's ever done it before and suddenly the opportunity for Gebri Selassie disappears as the two young Ethiopians stretch away from him and there's the sight of an athlete who can't do anything about his titles evaporating he's looking up the track and they're looking at the screen and they're seeing a surprise and highly Gebri Selassie one of the great distance runners of all time is running around the Olympic track in real distress. 
he's suffering from the pace, he's suffering from his ankle, and he's suffering from seeing the one, two, three that they so desperately wanted for Ethiopia. Looks like it's moving away from them. And Boniface Kiprop, the world junior champion, now runs alongside the world senior champion, Kennedy Sabakili, and these two are the new modern generation. And there, Haile Gebrislasi at the end of a great international career on the track. Sad to see Gabri not able to maintain the pace. The, if you watch that little right arm going again, it's always a sign that Gabri's tired anyway. He always said it was his action from carrying his books to school when he used to run to school and the right arm used to swing out a bit. He's just trying to pick it up again because, funnily enough, this is Tedesi ahead of him from Eritrea. Tedesi coming past him, the front three have slowed a little. That was a 6 of 6 lap. There they are, Boniface Kiprop, in fact, taking up the lead. They've slowed, and funnily enough, Tedeschi is bringing Gebri back to them, but he is tired, very, very tired, and they're looking for him. Where is he? Maybe can't believe that he's not there anymore, and they're starting to drop like flies. These conditions are really, really tough out there. Well, they're looking round. I can't believe this, Brendan, almost as if to say, we want him back in here. And they have waited and waited, and Gebri has been brought back to the group by Tedesi, but he is still struggling, I have to say that. The others look relaxed in the front of 67 laps. This would not have been in the game plan if Gebri was in that leading group. Five laps to go in the men's 10,000 metres. Haile Gebri Selassie suddenly being thrown a lifeline by his teammates, who managed to slow the pace down so that the great man can get back in touch. With just over a mile to go. And Haile Gebri Selassie, who was going out the back door, struggling when they were injecting the fast pace, and now he's back in contention. It's a risky business trying to run a race for one of your teammates who's struggling, because Kiprop on the inside and Tedesse and Eritrea on the inside, they're not going to wait for Haile Gebri Selassie. And now there's five in the group, but you just sense that they're not, they know that Haile's struggling. And there goes Tedesse. And this isn't part of the game plan, but I'll tell you what, he doesn't want Haile Gabriel Selassie for company. And look, every time the pace lifts a little, Haile goes out the back door, struggles, can't maintain it. And no matter what they do now, they want to forget about Haile, because the battle is between Kennedy Sabakili, <coughs> his teammate Sahin, and Haile Gabriel Selassie with four laps to go in the 10,000 metres, certainly isn't going to retain his title. An enthralling race as Shahin picks it up again. The last four kilometers have been run like this. So 235, then we had a 244, then we had a 237 when they picked it up again. We've just had a 246. Guess what? This next one's going to be quicker. The Keeley stretching out now. Shahin still with him for company. Boniface Kiprop has run a brave, brave race, but perhaps this is too much for him. The Ethiopian flags wave in the background. Now it's down to two as we approach the latter stages. This time round, there'll be just three laps to go. Gabri Selassie is away and gone now. The gold medal will be between these two Ethiopians, Pekili and Sihain. Well, the idea of the Ethiopian clean sweep has gone out of the window, but it looks like it's going to be a battle between Sahin and Bikili for the gold and silver medal. Tedesi, Veritrea, and there's Gabri Selassie just behind Boniface Kiprop of Uganda. So five Africans, the first five, and the two Ethiopians are now racing. They're pulling away all the time from Boniface Kiprop, and Selassie Sahin is after this one. He knows about the speed of Bikili. He knows that the world record holder behind him is determined to add to his world cross-country titles and his world track title. And he's moving out, he's saying to he's saying to Bikili, come on, I've done my bit, it's your turn. We're clear, but we've got to keep running quickly. 9,000 meters, 24 minutes and 37 seconds. Two and a half laps to go in the men's 10,000 meters. And the one thing for certain, it'll be a new champion. It'll be the same country, but it'll be a different name. Tedesi in pursuit. There's a medal opportunity for him. He's going to race it out with Boniface Kiprop, who's in fourth place. And there, Haile Gebri Selassie down the track. As Sahin, the 21-year-old, leads from Bekele, the 22-year-old. And that's a slower lap there, 65 seconds almost. But the two of them approaching the last 800. They're inside the last 800 metres now.